Good morning, dear students. Today we are going to discuss our experiment that is production of biofertilizer. Okay, how biofertilizer production is done. Now you all know what biofertilizers are. They are the natural fertilizers that contain microorganisms like bacteria, algae, fungi, almost present separately. So biofertilizers can be microorganisms like bacteria or algae or fungi. Okay, uh, which when added to the soil help in improving the soil quality, not only improving the soil quality, but help in plant growth and increased production. Okay, now these organisms which are applied as biofertilizers to the soil may help in biological nitrogen fixation and benefit the plant. Some of them may be phosphate solubilizing bacteria. Some of them may be mycorrhizae and hence increase the nutrient uptake of plant. They help up build soil microflora and hence uh, improve the soil health. Okay, then biofertilizers not only include um, the inoculants of bacteria, algae and fungi, some of them also include organic fertilizers like manures, compost okay vermicompost right then uh, all, all these things uh, which can be prepared by using cow dung then vegetable waste or plant waste like this now use of biofertilizer is recommended for improving soil fertility in organic farming okay now what are the different types of biofertilizers bacterial biofertilizers like Rhizobium, Azotobacter, Azospirillum, which are nitrogen fixing bacteria, they can be uh, used as a bacterial inocula and as biofertilizer. We can have fungal biofertilizers, okay, or algal biofertilizers like Anabina azola, then uh, uh, other algae like Cyanobacteria, Nostoc, Tolipotrix, okay. Anabina aquatic fern, Azola, because Anabina, uh, 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 alga named as Anabina, lives inside the roots of the aquatic fern, fern Azola, and hence it can be used as a nitrogen fixing biofertilizer. Earthworms can be used uh, for production of vermicompost, and hence it can be used as a biofertilizer. Okay, and then fungi, especially the mycorrhizae. Okay, and micro and that too micro in the range of mycorrhizae we have ectomycorrhizae, endomycorrhizae, and all. The most important mycorrhizae that are used as biofertilizers are generally the VAM fungi, vesicular, arbuscular mycorrhizae. Okay. Now, what are the different types of biofertilizers. If you just want to classify them, nitrogen fixing biofertilizer, which generally includes uh, algae and bacteria like rhizobium biofertilizer, which is a symbiotic nitrogen fixing bacteria, then uh, rhizobium biofertilizer, then azospirillum, okay, then azotobacter. And if you look at algae, we have cyanobacteria like nostoc, anabina, tolipotrix, etc. Then we have azola fern, which is also used as a nitrogen fixing bi biofertilizer. Then phosphorus solubilizing, rather we can say PSBs, phosphate solubilizing uh, biofertilizers. This includes bacteria like bacillus, thiobacillus, pseudomonas, alkaligens, flavobacter, etc. And phosphorus solubilizing fungi are also there. So PSBs uh, and phosphate solubilizing organism includes both phosphate solubilizing bacteria as well as fungi like aspergillus, penicillium, they can be used as uh, PSBs, so phosphate solubilizing organisms. Then phosphorus mobilizing, rather I would say mycorrhizae. Mycorrhizae means what? It is an association between fungi and root. So the fungus in combination with its plant root partner can bring about distant nutrients towards the plant, absorbs more of water and gives it to its plant partner like that. So mycorrhizae improves water absorption, nutrient absorption, resistance of the plant to pest, uh, resistance of the plant to fungi, fungal and bacterial attack like that. Okay. Then biofertilizers which add nutrients the micronutrients like zinc or silicon to the soil. And then we have organic fertilizers. So today we are going to discuss the production of rhizobium biofertilizer. How to produce it in our laboratory. Okay. So in this experiment, uh, we have four major steps. Number one is preparation of starter culture. We require, if, if I want to produce rhizobium biofertilizer, I require a starter culture of rhizobium. Okay. Then the starter culture of rhizobium is used for mass production of the broth culture of rhizobium. 
right? And then we need the carrier material like peat or lignite or charcoal with which the uh, broth culture of rhizobium is mixed. And then preparation of inoculants in powdered form, drying the powder, see, uh, putting it in plastic bags, sealing and all. So the major steps may be preparing the starter culture, mass production of the broth culture, then prepare, pre preparation of the carrier and then preparation of inoculants in powdered form. Now, here in this experiment, we are going to discuss how to isolate rhizobium from root nodules of legume plant. Now, depending upon, uh, see, rhizobium species is very, very specific for its legume partner. Okay, so there are different species of rhizobium like rhizobium japonicum, rhizobium lupini, rhizobium meliloti, like that. But the species of rhizobium is very specific for its legume plant partner. Okay, uh, rhizobium which attacks or which produces uh, root nodules in one legume will not produce root nodules in another leguminous plant. So we have to be very careful while selecting the rhizobium spe uh, species as biofertilizer for one particular legume crop plant. Okay, so we have to carefully select which biofertilizer to be used for, uh, which rhizobium biofertilizer to be used for which uh, legume plant. Okay, that has to be carefully selected. So the first thing we are going to study here is how to isolate rhizobium from root nodules of legume plant and then we will go for starter culture production. Okay. So what we have to do is surface sterilization of root nodules. First, we need a legume plant on the roots of which nodules are present, root nodules are present. All of us know that rhizobium present in soil attacks the root of its plant partner, okay, enters inside the root cells and forms root nodules, okay, on the root hairs. The rhizobium is present, bacteria is present inside the root nodules and brings about atmospheric nitrogen fixation in the form of nitrates, nitrites, and make it available to its plant partner. So here we are going to study the production of rhizobium biofertilizer. For that, we need the rhizobium bacteria and we are going to isolate the rhizobium bacteria from the root nodules. So what we do first, the first step is uproot the leguminous plant and bring them to the laboratory. Okay, so then the, the root, if you have to look at the roots whether nodules are present, then if they are there, wash the roots under running tap water for, to remove the adhering soil particles. And then we have to select healthy, pink, unbroken root nodules and wash them with running tap water. Okay. Then remove the nodules. Okay, first you wash the roots with running tap water, select healthy, uh, healthy pink unbroken root nodules, take them in a petri dish and wash them with water. Then immerse the nodules in 0.5% mercury chloride HgCl2 solution or three to 5% H2O2 solution for five minutes to sterilize the surface of the root nodules. Okay, once you have kept your root nodules in any of the two solution, you have to sterilize the surface. Okay, the surface gets mostly sterilized. Then you have to get rid of this chemical. To get rid of this chemical, repeatedly wash the nodules with sterile distilled water for three to four times to get rid of this chemical. If you have washed your nodules with HGCl2, then place the nodules in 70% ethanol for three to five minutes. Give them a wash and then Repeatedly wash your nodules again with sterile distilled water for three to four times to get rid of all the chemicals that you have applied on the surface of the nodules. Okay, so once you have followed all these steps, root nodule, the surface of the root nodules is sterile. It is okay, free from any kind of infect, uh, uh, contaminating bacteria that may be present in the soil. Okay, so repeatedly wash your nodules now with uh, sterile distilled water for three to four times to get rid of the chemicals now. Okay. Select few nodules, okay, place the nodules in, uh, you can say, test tube or also you can place it, uh, yeah, most of the time we place it in a test tube, right? Now crush the nodules by placing them in 1 ml sterile distilled water. Crush them with the help of a sterile glass rod gently and make a uniform suspension of rhizobium with water, okay? So take, select uh, the nodules and place them in a test tube. Okay, take 
one ml of sterile distilled water to two ml of sterile distilled water in the test tube and gently press them with the help of glass rod so that you get a uniform suspension or milky white suspension of rhizobium with water. This is how surface sterilization is done. And now you have a suspension containing rhizobium bacteria. Now what we have to do, we need to plate. Okay, plating is done so that colonies of rhizobium develop on a selective media. Now for selecting the rhizobium or for growing the rhizobium, we use yeast extract mannitol agar. Because rhizobium grows very well on yeast extract mannitol agar. Now this agar also contains a Congo red dye to remove the contaminating azotobacter, okay, which will have colored colonies like red color, but uh, rhizobium colonies are colorless or pale. So now the place a drop of this suspension on Yema medium and uniformly spread on the surface of the medium with the help of a sterile spreader. Or what you can do, uh, you can serially dilute the rhizobium suspension that you have prepared with water. You can serially dilute it and then plating is done on again EMR medium. Okay. Now incubate the plate at 26 to 30 degrees Celsius. You can say almost 28 degrees Celsius for 3 to 10 days. Actually colonies appear within 3 to 4 days. Okay. Then large pale colonies. Large pale gummy colonies of rhizobium appear on EMR medium within 10 days, within three to four days, you get the colonies. Okay, so the large pale gummy colonies of rhizobium appear on the Yama medium. And now starts the main step, that is preparation of mother culture or starter culture. Okay, let us now discuss the main technology. So a loop full of inoculum from the Petri dish, for the, or you can say loop full of inoculum of rhizobium that you developed on the Petri dish is transferred in liquid medium. Okay, a liquid nutrient medium, like you can say, take yeast extract mannitol uh, broth, okay, liquid medium, and keep the flask on rotary shaker for three to seven days. In between, go on shaking it up uh, if you do not have a shaker. But if you have a shaking incubator, it's well and good. You keep it in a rotary shaker for three to seven days. The contents of the flask, the, that, okay, after three to seven days, whatever culture that grows in the flask, the content of the flask is now called as mother culture or starter culture, right? Now, after sterilization of uh, sterilized uh, sterilization, the suitable broth, okay, now you take a suitable broth, it is inoculated with mother culture. Now, the broth which you select depends upon the type of biofertilizer you are producing. If you are here, we are studying uh, production of uh, rhizobium biofertilizer. So the suitable medium is yeast extract mannitol broth only. Okay, so sterilize the broth, inoculate with the mother culture. Keep the flask again on rotary shaker for 72 to 96 hours or 96 to 120 hours until viable count in the medium reaches to a cell mass of 10 raised to 9 cells per ml. Okay, so the starter culture is transferred to another broth culture and the flask is kept on a rotary shaker for say a period of 72 to 96 hours or up to 120 hours till you get a bacterial mass of 10 raised to 9 cells per ml. Up to that time, you have to incubate the, in the broth culture, okay, I mean, along with the mother culture, that is broth culture in a rotary shaker. Okay, once your broth is ready with 10 raised to 9 cells per ml, then you go for biofertilizer or inocula preparation. Right. Now, the next step is you require a carrier material. Okay. So, you can use a peat, you can use lignite, you can use charcoal. It is first neutralized by adding 1% calcium carbonate. And then this carrier material is sterilized in an autoclave at 15 pounds pressure for 3 to 4 hours. Okay. What kind of carrier material you are going to select? Number one, it should be cheaply available, okay? Cheaply and readily available. But at the same time, your carrier should have high organic carbon, high organic matter, about 60%. And high moisture holding capacity of 150 to 200%. Because you are going to mix your broth culture with this carrier. So it should have high moisture holding capacity. And it should have organic matter also to support the growth of bacteria for their survival during the storage period. Okay, when the biofertilizer is stored. 
right so it should have high organic matter and high water holding capacity moisture holding capacity and uh, provide a nutritive medium for the growth of bacteria and prolonged survive and prolong the survival in the uh, you have sterilized and neutralized lignite of it that means you have a starter material this is mixed with the high count broth culture high count means 10 raised to 9 cells per ml broth culture in galvanized trays or on plastic sheets after mixing the broth culture and lignite or peat powder or mixing the broth culture with carrier in one is to two proportion in the galvanized trays it is kept for curing at room temperature say 28 degrees celsius for a period of 5 to 10 days during that time it completely absorbs the broth culture or moisture and almost uh, dried powder is ready now after curing you have to crush the powder the sieved powder is filled in polythene bags of 0.5 mm thickness or so leaving two thirds space at the top open for aeration of bacteria the bag is packed by sealing the viable count in the carrier based inoculum this is called as carrier based inoculum because you have used a carrier uh, you cannot transfer the broth culture of rhizobium every time to your farmer you can you cannot deliver it to your farmer so you transfer your rhizobium with a carrier Th that is why we call it carrier based inoculum right now what is the carrier that we use peat or charcoal or lignite or whichever is cheaper so you you need a sterilized carrier and then after sterilization you mix your broth culture keep it for curing after curing fill it in uh, your polythene bags leaving two thirds space open and seal the bags the viable count in the carrier based inoculum should be maintained as per as uh, um, isi specification uh, the inoculant should be stored by the manufacturer in a cool place away from direct heat preferably at a temperature of 15 degrees celsius and it can if stored properly it will remain viable for a period of say Six months. Okay, so that is all about biofertilizer production, rhizobium biofertilizer production. Now let us discuss in brief about the carrier material. It should be cheaper in cost, locally available, high organic matter content, no toxic chemicals, water held, holding capacity should be more than 50%. Rather, we prefer the one which is having moisture holding capacity of 150 to 200% because you're going to mix your broth culture and it should be easy to process. Okay, now we require an ideal. Why do we require such an ideal carrier? For it is necessary for production of good quality. It, it should be good. Sorry, good quality of biofertilizer. What can we use? Peat, lignite, okay, uh, or charcoal. That is the the mostly one used. Okay, P, neutralized peat or lignite are found to be the better carrier particles. Then, neutralized and sterilized carrier material is spread clean dry sterile metallic or plastic or galvanized sheets the bacterial culture is collected from the fermenter added to the sterilized carrier mixed by manual or mechanical mixing in one is to two proportion and then it is kept for curing and after curing the inocula uh, inoculants are packed in polythene bags right and your polythene bags should have so much of specifications written on them name of the manufacturer Name of the product, the strain number, the crop to which it is recommended, method of inoculation, date of manufacturing, batch number, expiry, price, storage instructions, etc. Okay, so that is how biofertilizer production is done. So that is all about rhizobium biofertilizer production.